The corruption investigation into former New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian took ages to finalise. And when the report came out, there was a lot of noise about the delay. The lengthy delays. Delays. Delay after delay after delay. That's New South Wales Liberal MP and former Treasurer Matt Keane. He wasn't happy with the report and he made a complaint about the New South Wales Independent Commission Against Corruption, or ICAC. This led to an investigation which looked into whether ICAC had done something wrong. The findings of that investigation have now been released. But first, some very quick background. For years, ICAC was investigating a New South Wales Liberal politician, Daryl Maguire, for dodgy dealings. Phone taps revealed that he was in a secret relationship with the Premier of New South Wales, Gladys Berejiklian. A recently released ICAC report, at almost 700 pages long, explained why both Daryl and Gladys were found to have engaged in serious corrupt conduct. And if you want a breakdown of the findings, you can check out this video. I'll put a link in the description. The reactions from Gladys's mates and the Liberal Party were mostly denial and attempts to undermine ICAC. There were lots of complaints about how long it took for the report to be published, with some suggesting that ICAC was playing games. ICAC is not meant to take two years to hand down a decision. And I'm upset for the people of New South Wales whose confidence in the ICAC has been undermined by the lengthy delays in this report coming down. No, I think ICAC's behaviour has undermined the public's confidence in ICAC through the lengthy delays in handing down their findings. Even the current Labor Premier of New South Wales, Chris Minns, had a go. Firstly, this report's taken way too long. I think that's been generally recognised across the political spectrum in New South Wales. Because of all the complaints, the inspector of the ICAC decided to start an investigation. The inspector is an independent person who can look into whether ICAC is acting in accordance with the law. The current inspector is Gail Finesse, who is an experienced barrister. As a side note, she was also recently appointed as the NACC inspector the NACC being the new federal version of ICAC. The inspector basically has the powers of a royal commissioner and can get full access to ICAC's documents and force ICAC to answer questions. Once the inspector has investigated, a report is published with their findings. And in the past, they've had no issues in publicly slamming ICAC, so I don't doubt the inspector's independence. In August 2023, the inspector released her report on the delay in the Gladys investigation. And ultimately her focus was whether the time taken by ICAC amounted to maladministration. To figure this out, the reasons for the delay were examined. Unsurprisingly, one of the biggest constraints on ICAC is their budget. The New South Wales Liberal government in the 2015-2016 budget cut massive amounts of funding out of ICAC. And it wasn't until the 2022-2023 budget that more funding was received. Despite this, the inspector found that the commission used its available resources effectively. She also quoted a High Court of Australia case, saying, It may be said to be a responsibility of the government to the public at large to alleviate such sources of delay. In other words, the government needs to provide the necessary funding in the first place so that delays like this are reduced. And do you know who was in government for over a decade and in a position to do something about ICAC's funding? It was Matt Keane, who is now turning around and complaining about delays. In fact, he was the treasurer of New South Wales from 2021. But back to ICAC, if the government doesn't give them the funding, they can't investigate corruption properly, which is convenient. The second reason there was a big delay was the complexity of the investigation. The report summarised this, saying the investigation involved two members of parliament, including one who was the premier. There were two public inquiries held with 30 days of hearings. Over 8,000 pages of transcripts were generated and over 700 exhibits tended as evidence. ICAC also gave people the opportunity to respond to potential adverse findings that were being considered. And this was done to give people procedural fairness. On the back of all this, the submissions that had to be considered were massive, at almost a thousand pages long. Gladys's lawyers made 135 pages of written submissions, and Darrell's lawyers made 46 pages of submissions. Because of this, 
the inspector concluded that it was unlikely that the report would be completed quickly, be short, or shy away from complex legal issues. Despite these constraints, the inspector noted that the long delay had an enormous impact. Gladys chose to resign as Premier because of the uncertainty, although it seems to me that with the findings of corruption, it was only a matter of time. The inspector also said that the reputation of many people continued to be affected and the welfare of witnesses were impacted during the wait for the report to come out. However, the inspector found that the evidence showed that all involved from ICAC were attentive, diligent and acted in good faith. So what was the ultimate conclusion of the inspector? McKean seemed to summarise the conclusion in a tweet, saying that recommendations had been made to review ICAC's systemic issues that impacted the welfare and reputation of those involved because of the delay. That makes it seem like ICAC was found to have done something wrong, but it's also not at all the conclusion that was actually reached. In reality, the inspector found that the delay did not amount to maladministration. She said it was a necessary delay and not undue delay. Basically, there was no wrongdoing by ICAC. I also found it interesting that the inspector dealt with another issue, which was the presence of the media when the report was being given to Parliament by ICAC officials. Now I wonder where that complaint came from. Uh, this morning we saw the unbecoming spectacle of two ICAC apparatchiks handing over their report on live TV. I mean, this is an integrity body, it's not a soap opera, and what we saw today was unbecoming of a body with these powers. Uh, the unbecoming uh, uh, behaviour of the ICAC inspectors coming into Parliament on live TV to hand over the report, I think ICAC themselves have damaged the public's confidence in them and I think we need to restore the public's trust so that they can continue to do the important work that is the foundation of our democracy. And then yesterday we saw the unbecoming performance by two ICAC apparatchiks lining up cameras as they walked into Parliament to hand over the report as if it was some kind of soap opera. Well, Pete, let me tell you, integrity probes are not a soap opera and yesterday shouldn't have been the circus which ICAC turned it into. This is the video he's complaining about. Two ICAC employees go to Parliament and hand over the report. I mean, this is such a non-issue. Who cares if the media was present? The ICAC's findings deserved as much publicity as they could get anyway. And the inspector found that it wasn't even ICAC that made the decision to have the media attend Parliament. She said there was no misconduct or maladministration. Now, the inspector's report wasn't without recommendations, and a number of these dealt with how ICAC could streamline its reporting procedures to get things done quicker. For example, page limits on submissions, or more efficient proofreading processes. And overall, I think it was worth looking into what caused the delay, because things took ages to finalise. But it's clear now that ICAC didn't do anything wrong, and worked to the best of their ability, given the constraints. What else is clear to me, is that Matt Keane is just super annoyed that his mate Gladys was labelled as corrupt, and it seems that undermining ICAC has been his go-to response. This is a bit off topic, but maybe this annoyance is because secret parliamentary relationships is a touchy subject. Turns out that a few years ago, Matt Keane was caught out when his then partner released text messages showing that he was trying to have an affair with fellow Liberal politician Eleni Petanos. Petinos herself was recently sacked as a minister after allegations came out of her bullying her staff. The Liberal Party really has a great talent pool. Anyway, if you want to read the full report into the ICAC delay, I'll have a link to that in the description. And as always, thanks for watching. If you want to help me make more content, consider checking out my Patreon page.